episode right. eight of the Sooniverse podcast here with Jordan Stuttered. Thanks for What's coming up, on, bro? man. <laughs> do it. I'm just going to start real quick. <laughs> but I'm amped because like we, we talked for a while before and now we're going to yeah. just like redo the conversation pretty much. But um, let me just intro you real quick. Basically, you graduated SCAD 2017, animation, motion graphics. And then you went to New York. You did more motion graphics. You worked at Vayner Media as like a designer. Mm-hmm. We're also, my sister works and also Tom, our mutual friend. Yes. And then you're now kind of like doing TikTok content creation full time, mm-hmm. which is exciting. But besides that synopsis, how would you actually define yourself? If for the people watching, if they don't know you, put you on the spot. Um, yeah, I guess I... I make TikToks. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's it's weird right now because things are changing a lot. For a long time, like I was a graphic designer that made short videos on the side, and mm-hmm. now I make uh, basically short stories for TikTok or other like vertical, basically short stories for vertical video. Mm-hmm. Um, I've started doing a little more reels, a little more YouTube shorts, but TikTok is my main platform. So. Sweet, yeah, yeah, that's great. And like, I want to dive into it because, like I said when we, we we only just met but like i watch all your tiktoks and i think they're so cool and like <laughs> yeah, of the, all i mean there's plenty of content out there and there's also yeah. a lot of garbage on tiktok but i think your mm-hmm. videos are like the most tasteful the most like actually like creative and like anyways not to smoke Thank your you, salmon <laughs> too hard <laughs> but um they're really awesome and um so another question just to start out like what to run it back even more because i like to kind of get like a nice synopsis of the people like you were always doing kind of creative stuff, like even before SCAD, like you, mm-hmm. you, I remember you saying you were working as like a contractor and doing construction, but like you always enjoyed like videos, telling stories. Yeah. Yeah. If you want the, we can do the full picture. I want it. Um, yeah. I want the full picture. Yeah. I've always kind of been like an art kid um, or like the kid who always drew in class. Mm. Uh, when I was at like in, I don't know, maybe fifth grade or something. Um, I was like bored at home one weekend and just being like a brat about it and just like laying on the couch all day. And my mom was like, stop complaining, like, (laughs) like go outside and play or like (laughs) go do something like whatever, go play with your friends. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just bored. I don't want to do it. But I was watching cartoons and I was, um, she was like, well, why don't you just draw you cartoons? Like you watch these shows all the time. Just try drawing some of that. And I was like, "Ah, okay, whatever. And then uh, I started drawing, like, I think it was Billy and Mandy and, like, some other cartoon characters and found out I could actually kind of draw a little bit. I was Mm. like, oh, this is a lot of fun. And then um, from there, like, in class all the time, like, I would just doodle and draw and make stuff. And then into high school, and when I got to high school, I, um, we had an animation class, oddly enough, Um, like, 3D animation. It was mostly a blow-off class because most kids, like, didn't really care about it, but there was, like, three of us that were kind of into it. And so I started like playing around with um, this animation software, Cinema 4D, Mm -hmm. found out I could like build little worlds in there. The same worlds that I'd made in my drawings, like I could then kind of build them out in 3D and make Mm -hmm. little stories and then fell in love with that and then realized like, oh, maybe I'll make a career out of that if that's even possible. I don't know. So then I was like, oh, maybe I could do like Pixar stuff um, in that sort of lane. And so looked around for schools for a while. Settled on SCAD, went there for animation. Um, About three years in, I realized like animation's just really slow. Mm. It takes like, I worked six weeks on a project for that was like 45 seconds long. Um, And I was just like, yeah, it's like, this is too much. Versus a video, I can make a video, I can shoot it that day and finish it that day. Yeah. Um, And it can be five minutes long, one minute long, whatever. So I started getting more into film and video making uh, and then being able to use some of my animation skills towards that. And then now we are here. Yes, we are here. <laughs> and then to also piggyback, great, great synopsis right yeah. there. Very clear and articulate. You came to New York and you, I remember you telling me you were helping out with like Sarah Dietschy and then Beam. So how did that was kind of maybe the next or like the more specific catalyst to start doing your own tiktok content or you were doing it all the time yeah i'd always done them. like yeah i'd always done videos um i'd always made like little youtube videos like mm-hmm. vlogs with my friends and whatever else or a lot of things i'd built um growing up in texas like we built decks and fences and tree houses and whatever um so i've always kind of been a little handy and been able to build things and that's i think a part of video making that i really love is building yeah. out the sets 
And so when I got to New York, like I didn't have, um, I didn't know like where I didn't have any friends. I didn't know like mm. how to, I don't know what to do. Um, but I did know that like I could build and a lot of people in New York, uh, cannot because they're city kids. And so yeah. it's like growing up in the country, um, I could do power tools or, you know, do whatever. The can do attitude. Exactly. Yeah. Just fix it up. So, mm -hmm. um, I knew knowing I wanted to do like YouTube videos and like social media in some way, I had been working at uh, Vayner for a little bit then and was able to meet um, just a couple different YouTubers and like influencers around the city. And so I helped them like build out their studio. So right. Sarah, Sarah Dici, like I helped hang a TV and like build out some shelves. Brett Conti, I helped build some stuff. So that guy Willie Morris helped some stuff um, basically just all all around town. And because of that, like I was able to meet these people and kind of like start hanging around this crowd um of like also just like-minded creative people yeah so we we're able to like to gel and hang out and yeah that's, that's yeah. awesome and i feel like that's like such a maybe that wasn't even your intention but just like the overarching idea of networking but trying yeah, to surround yourself like, with like yeah like i people. didn't have a you know i didn't come to the city like four years ago and be like i want to be a tiktoker yeah it was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was very much just like okay what i got here like what can i do right it but it paralleled like, with your passions of storytelling and it kind yeah. of like unfolded slowly yeah the general idea is like okay i want to make videos and i want to hang out with creative people yeah and so it's like okay like how can I be of use in that area right. that other people can't? And it's like I can, I can build or I can help people with their videos too. Totally. Like some of these um, people that already had like their careers or whatever established. Mm -hmm. Like I was just there to hang out and help out if they needed it. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's great. I love that. And then so kind of talking more contextually about your videos because they're really great and you have this wonderful series called My Friends. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I mean, this is a people are listening to this podcast, but also the video. We'll play one of. Jordan's videos, the Natalia one, the color picker, mm -hmm. because I want to talk about it, that one and break it down. But you should all obviously go check out his videos to, um, to see what we're talking about. But specifically, <laughs> the My Friends. Can you tell us yeah. about the My Friends, like the playlist, the idea, and like how that started? Because I feel like that's super similar, almost just what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. So like a yearish ago, I started like getting, I started posting more on TikTok, and I was like, this platform's interesting and it just seems like a cool place to kind of play around and just throw ideas out. Mm -hmm. So I started making like, I'd throw out like a little travel video or just me building something or like whatever. Um, and then just trying to see if whatever would stick. And I did that for like six months. Um, and I had some like building videos that did pretty well, but nothing crazy. And then I went home for Christmas and my friend Reagan um, was staying at a hotel that her family she was like living and working at this hotel that her family owned. And we'd gone there a bunch um, when we were kids because it was a small town and we kind of know most of the people. And uh, so I was like, oh, if you're, um, I was basically just bored. And so I was like, oh, you're just living at this hotel. This is yeah. an interesting set. And I just watched um, Grand Budapest Hotel by Wes Anderson. And I was like, oh, this is kind of like you live in a hotel. Maybe we'll kind of film it in this style and see how it goes and so um we filmed it and just with the idea of like okay this is my friend reagan she lives at this hotel um every day she picks up these sticks because they're when we used to go there as kids like my brother and i would just like fight and just beat each other over the head with these sticks because mm -hmm. <laughs> they just fall from all the trees there and Naturally. then we'd have to like, pick them up so i was like maybe that's the storyline she like picks up these sticks and then it's like well let's add a little bit of like mystery to that. Yeah. And it's like, what does she do with them? And so she kind of like hides them away and you don't really, we don't really know exactly what mm -hmm. she does, but that was the first video I posted. And then within a day or two, it had like a million, 2 million views. Crazy. Um, and I was like, Whoa, yeah. this is something. Um, and so then I was like, huh, I don't want to make stick videos <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Um, because I'd seen people do that. Like, I think, you know, one of the most dangerous things is can be a viral video where you yeah. just get stuck in that. You're right. And so I was like, I don't want to make stick videos, but I like doing these little, like, stories about my friends. And was that the first, like, narrative video? Because I know you were talking about you building things, like you built that cool light dome, and that was, mm -hmm. like, I guess, you know, chronological order of doing something. But this was kind of like a story 
you were telling yeah yeah i'd always done like vlog type stuff yeah. or like in the moment like okay today i'm gonna build this light or this table yeah but this was the first time that i was like let's make kind of a little movie where right. it's, it's not exactly acting or anything but it's in a little bit it is i try not any people like i'm, I'm making videos with i try not to have them like unless it's like a, a commercial or brand deal or something like act too much mm -hmm. i like to take uh people who already kind of are in this world a little bit and then just add like a little bit of extra magic to it um Salt, yeah. but yes it was the first like narrative one mm -hmm. where you wrote a script sort of thing it's not necessarily yeah wrote a, yeah. yeah figure out a script kind of roughly storyboarded it in my head and then went from there and you're like okay wow that was awesome creatively fulfilled and validation from the platform there's opportunity let me keep going yeah exactly i was like this you. was really f <laughs> this was really fun yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um like i had a great time people loved it and so i was like huh i can i have other friends like i can do this <laughs> i can do this like more and more yeah. and like kind of keep adding uh, a little bit of these like ideas out into the world yeah and so that's what i think is so wonderful because it really is sort of like profiles on other creatives but with this wonderful mysterious like ethereal mystery where they're like mm -hmm. it's i wouldn't say it's fiction and again i don't want to define it for you but like there's so many amazing videos my favorite is the um keeper of secrets mm -hmm. and um specifically i want to talk about the color capture yeah with natalia my friend Natalia has a cool backpack. She uses it here for her job at the Color Corporation, where every day all she receives is a list of potential color names. And it's her job to find out what those colors actually are. Her company is always on the lookout for new colors, so she's out there capturing every shade and hue. Today's news, the Color Corporation is still on the hunt for Color X. They say it could be the next electricity, but at what cost? Anything is fair game, with Sunset, of course, being one of the best places to capture colors. Afterwards, Natalia and her backpack come back to her color cubby, where she downloads the day's palette. These colors might become paint, or crayons, or markers. She doesn't really know. She hasn't decided on a favorite color yet. It's still in the works, but unknown to the mega color corporation, Natalia has kept one extra special color just for herself. Attention, all color capturers, please report back to headquarters. And so can we break that down because yeah. i love the process and i want to know because that <laughs> yeah, was like man. and like this is again it's like there's 60 second videos mm -hmm. but like so much effort goes into it clearly yeah. you wrote a script and hopefully we've already played the video chris we overlaid it um mm -hmm. so people can get an idea and it's perfect because it's only 60 seconds but like inception of that idea from the script location like obviously all the wonderful props and that yeah. can you break it down for us because i yeah. want to know so that can you show I, I, me? <laughs> <laughs> please we just have a full dance yeah. number on the table Lights. um yeah so i guess they've already seen it but mm -hmm. um so i'd followed natalia's work for um a little bit instagram had like reposted some of her stuff and she does these really cool collages um where it's like photoshop collages where kind of a similar th similar to what I do, but in picture form, well, she'll, she'll take a picture like of an environment of a room and then kind of photo collage it to make it a little surreal, a mm -hmm. little fantastical. In yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, she, we'd like become mutuals on like Instagram or TikTok or something. And then it DM back and forth being like, Hey, like, I love your work. I love your work too. And then she was like, I'm going to be in the city like next month. Um, if you want to like hang out or do something. And I was like, yeah, like, let's make a TikTok. Like I, think your work is awesome there's going to be something here nice and so for about a month i kind of thought about it and had no ideas and then <laughs> she arrived to the city and i was like oh damn like we gotta we gotta film like right now <laughs> yeah. um and i was like just kind of like racking my brains for a different different things to do and i was like okay natalia it's very colorful do something with the color uh where do we film i don't know i think with a lot of these videos i think of like the set first because i'm like a builder yeah set designer in a way like environment I of, yeah that, setting that helps like push the idea and so i was like where could i film with her and i was like maybe home depot and like the color aisle with all the little swatches That's a good idea yeah and i was like huh who makes those swatches like where do they come from <laughs> and like who names those colors mm. um and I remember being a kid and looking at like a box of crayons and seeing like jungle green yep. or like um, monster purple or something. And it's like, who comes up with these names? Right. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. 
And so I was like, huh, okay, there's, there's like, it's, there's a job there that maybe already exists, but like what, you know, what's my version of that? And so okay, I, see. Wow, that's I cool. was like, okay, what if her job is to like name or like find the names of these colors? Um, and then going from there, it's like, okay, maybe she's in a room full of these swatches and she has to like somehow figure out these colors. And it's like, okay, what if she works for a corporation, the color corporation, who names the colors and then it's her job they just basically give her the the names every day and it's her job to go out and find those colors yeah. wow. and so she travels around with her little backpack mm -hmm. she sucks up the colors and then um brings them back to her little color cubby so that's great so yeah, yeah. wow so that the yeah the the ping pong of ideas to get to that idea but then you obviously come to that and you're like all right let's build the props because that's what yeah. i love also and i know we share mm -hmm. like the love for building mm -hmm. maybe i can't build a deck as well as you but <laughs> i like love props Absolutely. and like i love adam savage and like the yeah. maker so like when i saw that first one i was like oh shit and like even mm -hmm. like the because is the color part of the backpack animated yeah yeah and yeah, like so that's a little green screen yeah on the backpack yeah and it's just the sauce that it's is. just this extra sauce mm -hmm. that makes it so wonderful but like and the room and i know i I was looking on Natalia's page, the behind the scenes, it took you guys like 10 hours to just do that yeah, cubby so wall long, so long for a two second <laughs> video. But like, it's the wonderful yeah. thing. And like, yeah, that's the fun part to me. Like I just did a, a, a brand deal where like when I pitched it to them, I was going to do this like design on a t-shirt and have that be sort of the prop. Mm. And then I was like, that's not enough. And so then I ended up building like a full cave out of like paper and different right. things because that's more fun to me. It's like, even if it's longer, like I'm having a better time. And so with her stuff, it was like, it was like, oh my gosh, we can, we can build like a mm -hmm. color room. It's like, oh my God, like we have to build a color room. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> yeah. God, this is gonna take forever. Yeah. Um, and, but still it's like, it's gonna look so cool. It and is. I don't have a, you know, it's just me like filming, editing, animating, doing all the stuff on this video. So yeah. I don't have a, production team mm -hmm. to do green screen and big i don't know special effects so it's right. like if we're gonna do it most of the time we got to do it real totally um and i'm not working with like trained actors or anything yeah. so it's like for natalia who's a great artist i don't know if she's ever acted or not but it's like i know that she's gonna do better if she has an actual backpack that looks like yeah it could suck up colors totally. um I bet you would want that in real life. I bet you was yeah, pissed exactly. when she had to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it goes such a long way. It's like, again, I know the video you just posted with the, the cave. Mm -hmm. um, it was literally maybe two seconds in that video. And it took you, what, all yeah. night or something? Yeah, it took us like two hours, I think, to build. And then we yeah. filmed it for about five to ten seconds. And yeah. then, but those yeah. are the things, like the color picker, where like it, you kind of know. And you know the feel of it. And it's almost like one of those things where... For a lot of things, it's like the highest quality things that maybe, you know, people don't notice. It's like, that's what it's supposed to be. Like when it's good, you almost don't notice it. And like, right. you don't really like think, oh, wow, that's so amazing. That took so long. It's just part of like the well put together, whatever mm -hmm. project. So, yeah. But like, I, I love think, that. Yeah. I think again, too, it's kind of like if you're trying to stick out on social media, it's like, what can you do that mm -hmm. other people cannot do? And especially with TikTok and like these kind of narrative TikToks, it's like, I know I can build a set and most other TikTokers cannot build a set. Yeah. Or they, maybe they can and they're not willing to spend four hours to build, totally. <laughs> to build one. So it's like, yeah. this is going to help give that video an extra like magical quality that, um, that'll help it stand out. Totally. And like you were saying how you don't have a production crew and you edit and film everything. And I wanted to talk about that real quick, like more in depth. It's all iPhone. It's all iPhone, yeah. Yeah, wow, well, and that's just like the native thing that people love. Yeah, so with TikTok and a lot of like vertical video, especially, you're scrolling so fast that people know what an iPhone video looks like. They know what an iPhone video looks like versus an Android video, mm -hmm. versus an old iPhone, versus a DSLR camera. Um, people just have this kind of native, like your eye can just tell subconsciously. So with iPhone on TikTok, everything's everything on TikTok is made on iPhone usually some of course are Android but um it makes it feel more like it's supposed to be on the yeah. app um and then also it's so much easier like I don't have to worry mm -hmm. about memory cards I don't have to worry about batteries like if if we're filming and my phone dies like we'll just use your phone right and then you can airdrop 100%. me you can airdrop no, me later it's amazing like, I mean it's, it's fine 
talk about efficiency and like getting to the actual story you want to tell but like yeah i think you would though your videos as wonderful written as they are if you just like wrote them as a short story like having this huge production would almost like take away from like the tangible kind of like homemade happy yeah. you know like you know spongebob where like he's ver mm -hmm. he's um he's frying off against poseidon and poseidon makes like a million crowd patties yeah. and spongebob makes like one <laughs> Dude, in their I time about that episode that's so it's like the, it's like the love it's so much love and maybe that, i'm reading too one. much into your video no, but... it's me with my little iphone like yeah, putting the like, putting the cheese on and the pickles the and love and you could tell the bun um <laughs> but yeah wow that's a that's a flashback take it how you will um maybe i'm reading too much too much but that's what i'm saying and so again sorry to keep jumping really quick but i'm really no, feel like these are over. leading to wonderful questions that i'm curious yeah. about and we talked about it again when you came here and so those specific videos and again it's almost like this quantity versus quality mm -hmm. and like all your videos are high quality and you're not like the normal tiktoker doing six videos a day blasting yourself it's like i don't know what your schedule is maybe one a week or something but all of them are of this kind of like written developed yeah final you know um uh quality yeah yeah it's which is i'm also very impressed that people still watch it <laughs> even though i put out like one a week one every two weeks or a yeah. couple weeks or whatever um because i know a lot of tiktokers that do like multiple of course like multiple videos a day and that works for them i think me just like knowing my strengths it's like i am not as good of like a vlogger of just like selfie mode in the street like running around doing stuff all day like people just aren't as interested in that yeah. that's the stuff that i did on youtube for a long time mm -hmm. and instagram whatever it just didn't really hit and that's fine but i know that i can tell these stories um really well and and that that's like what people like to yeah see. yeah no that's great yeah i'm struggling with that also i'm trying to not redo my whole content creation thing but tr trying to take a step back and be like what do i really want to do what do i actually like to do yeah it's like you're this interesting mix of like classical oil painting new age youtube yeah. and like street art that it's like where do you and i'm confused man you... <laughs> i'm on a bit of midlife crisis <laughs> you'll Not figure really. it i believe no, in you yeah, dude no, you'll but, figure uh, it out it's it's so interesting because yeah, mm -hmm. i don't talk to many people and like you're only one of my few kind of content friends and like tom but like mm -hmm. like i was saying before i'm really trying to hang around with more people but it's, i just think it's so interesting that's why i'm trying to pick your brain um a little more but you know tiktok what does it really mean to you now like is it just a business is it mm. still this creative platform for you to tell stories is it a little both it's a little both so tiktok's yeah. still like my biggest platform so that's where my audience lives and that's where people who like my videos are mm -hmm. um it's also a bit of a business now that's my full-time job is like of making course. uh videos branded videos for tiktok i'm gonna start like getting into youtube and instagram and like some others um just to kind of like diversify a little bit but mm -hmm. tiktok is still still the main one and i think tiktok favors creators a lot more um i like the app in general i mm -hmm. like when you follow someone and they follow you back you get like a little message in your dms right. being like you now follow each other yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you can talk like i've been able to that's how i met natalia that's how i met so many other of my like recent friends in the last couple months is just because like that dm popped up and then i was like yo i love your work and they were like i love your work and it's like let's hang out yeah um Ooh, right so, of passage yeah exactly and great. it's it's like if anything anything a lot of the stuff right now that you see on reels or on youtube it's like it f began on tiktok and now yeah. it's getting reposted over there so i think tiktok is kind of the the genesis of a lot of this it is i feel like it's the stuff the the not the final frontier but like the first tier of like actual raw content and then everything mm. kind of gets recycled yeah um but yeah it's interesting but like do you, i'm curious again to because your videos are so kind of different they're not as frequent as other creators how do you like broker and pitch like integrations like are most of the companies i'm assuming are reaching out to you mm -hmm. i love to talk about like business side of stuff um, just for me, but also on this podcast to give insight, because I feel like a lot of people don't really know that back end. But, you know, you're making big deals with big companies like I saw Tostitos, you got KFC, this new mm -hmm. one with Milkshake, <laughs> something. <laughs> I did one with Milk Bar, Milk uh, Bar. the recent one with For Real. And then, um, yeah, there's there's a couple others in the works. So. so how does the, if you don't mind, I mean, like brokering those deals or pitching them, is it they want to work with you and then you go, hey, these are my ideas for yeah. your product or brand or awareness package 
mm-hmm. and then they say yes or do is it a lot of times they have ideas for you and you're just like bruh <laughs> <laughs> bro, come no on, bro. <laughs> I, mean, I think like whenever whenever you're first starting out on tiktok or anything social media brands will hit you up and they'll be like hey we have this well first you'll get hit up by companies being like we have this free desk. We'll send you a desk if you yeah that one yeah if you make a <laughs> if you make a video about it. And so there's those deals, and then there's uh, the deals of like okay, we have this water bottle. We'll if you make a TikTok with this water bottle, we'll pay you like fifty bucks. And um, those deals, when I first started TikTok and started like back in January of this year, when I like my videos started going viral, I still had like a day. I still had a day job. And so because of that, like I was making money. So I was good, like money wise. Mm-hmm. So I was able to make the videos that I wanted to make. Mm. Um, I didn't have to depend on TikTok for like all of my income. Selling out. Yeah. In, in a way. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, I could say no to a lot of things that I, I, I didn't necessarily like, like mm-hmm. my apartment is small. I don't have, I don't have the room for the, the extra desk. Like I have 50 bucks. Like I don't need to make a whole video about a water bottle right. to get it. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I was able to wait for a little bit until some of these bigger brands came in. And then it's, I was able to pick and choose which ones I wanted to work with. So even the, even bigger money deals will come in and they'll be like, okay, here's this script, hold the product and read the script. Oh. And, um, that's just not quite my style. Like I said, like I'm doing these, I'm going to spend four hours in the middle of the night building a set. Yeah. So like, it's got to be fun for me. Right. Um, so really I only work with brands that are like open to my ideas and like my process and also like know my content. A lot of times if I can see that an email is like scripted or whatever, it yep. makes me hesitant to work with them. Um, versus if they're like, wow, we really love like this video and like your style of doing this and this. Then I'm like, okay, they've watched my videos, they get the gist, and then uh, we can make something cool together. As a, if I'm playing devil's advocate, thinking myself as a company, I would totally want to be like, oh, we're gonna trust Jordan mm-hmm. to make something in his style that involves our company, because like that, assuming that your all your videos are doing great, which they do, and your mm-hmm. interactions are great, and people love your videos, like wouldn't that make rationally the most sense for a brand rather than them telling you what to do, you know? Yeah, and that exactly. makes that makes sense. And my videos make. My videos, I think, are a lot of companies like my videos because they humble make, pie, baby. They make more. No, no, you're <laughs> I'm just trying awesome. to figure out how to word it, but yeah. it's like um, in this age of TikTok, where brands now have to advertise on this platform, mm-hmm. a lot of them are scared because they don't understand what what it is. And so my videos make sense to a lot of companies because it's uh you can watch it and you can understand like oh this is a fun story i can hop on board Mm -hmm. versus like some of these companies that are you know it's like why am i gonna give a couple thousand dollars to a kid that dances right how is that gonna help me sell t-shirts like i don't i don't understand that's so true um and that type of branding still works oddly enough like people will watch the dancing videos and and buy stuff Mm -hmm. but um for some of the for some of the companies still getting used to TikTok itself, um, my videos are a nice place because it's, it's, you get a little movie out of it. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. That's super interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I love that. Um, so moving away from that, what are you working on now? Uh, I'm curious. Couple, we got a couple videos in the works. Yeah. So looking at doing a color capture part two. No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. brought Stay that one tuned. up wonderfully. <laughs> That's sweet. Uh, a Secret Keeper part two. Holy shit. Um, yeah, part two on some of these. For a while, I didn't want to do part two, part threes for them because, like I said, I didn't want to get stuck. I didn't want to have a viral video and get stuck in that. So I didn't want to be the color capture yeah. guy. Like I, I wanted to Ooh, yeah. show that I could do multiple stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and but they're classics. Of, they're classics, and I like to tell them. Yes. So the color capture one and secret keeper. There's a couple others as well, but I want to make them into children's books eventually. Wow. That's like the kind of longer play. So because of that, I want to make sure that the story is like fully told mm. and well told out. And then um, there's there's a lot more to say. Both of those videos uh, did really well, kind of went viral, but they're kind of like teasers. They're, there's a whole like backstory behind them. I believe it. And a world. And that's um, that's really cool. Wow. Uh-huh. I love that. And that's kind of like the sneak peek the vision and that's what i think is so cool about you and something we also share is the 
large scale tropes or ideas like again people don't know we were talking we both share a love for books and fantasy yeah, yeah, and yeah. like i just while we were talking had a little neuron fire like the the color capture does that have anything to do with like Lightbringer and that whole idea of light <laughs> and like you know capturing you know like not that you bit it or anything but like yeah, yeah. those magical systems like it totally i mean knowing you a little better now and mm. your interests like do you find inspiration from like fantasy books and the stories? Because like again, yeah. you're a big book nerd. People who don't know, big book nerd. You love yeah, books, which I is think so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> books are the best. Yeah, we love it. Awesome. Good. Um, I think in some way, subconsciously, probably so. Mm -hmm. Like I've always been a book nerd, and so I've always been interested in just stories in general. Mm -hmm. And I think when I was in school. I just hated class so much. So I would just read in the back and I'd put my book in between the textbook wow. and like be reading stories while the teacher's talking. And then I'd stop reading and I'd look outside and I'd just imagine like what's going on out there mm -hmm. and like what store, like what are those two clouds doing like outside of the classroom? Like what if those clouds like met and then they had like they got together and formed like a cloud team and then they like <laughs> played cloud basketball on the school court while we were inside playing class. I don't know. Just random stories like that so i've always had this like kind of mind that uh makes up all these little stories yeah. and then being doing and reading all these books that have such epic tales and um weave in magic and drama and whatever yeah. i think that helps i think the writing side of my videos mm -hmm. and then also kind of helps inform you know what what can work in a magical world and and maybe what can't yeah, I love it. And it's like the grandiose kind of like world and, mm -hmm. you know, color capture is just like, you know, you don't really get that much information. You literally just know that a girl needs to capture colors from this corporation. But yeah. there clearly <laughs> has to be even someone watching it that, you know, maybe yeah. you wouldn't flesh that idea. You have to imagine there's more to that world. Like, yeah, I think I think the cause and effect, too, like you're saying, like Lightbringer yeah. and Brandon Sanderson and whatever he he came out, Brandon Sanderson, the author, came out with these like rules of magic, which is like how he structures his magical worlds. And in that, it's like every, everything has to has like, have a cause and effect. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you see some of these anime shows, it's like this guy does an epic, fuck, big, like yeah. <laughs> giant punch and then it like destroys a city. And yeah. you're like, where did that, where did all that power come from? It uh -huh. doesn't make sense. That's, yeah. he, yesterday he was like a normal dude and yeah. now he can like destroy a city. So, to fill the role of like the narrative, but it's yeah. just like a it's like a cheat piece. Yeah, almost. It, I think that's when it takes you out, where you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't understand where people in this world get their power, magical power, whatever. Um, but it's like if you can set up a story where it's like, oh, if you train a lot, you can become more powerful. Yeah, like in even like Harry Potter or something. It's yeah. like wizards. There's a couple, you know, whatever, like big wizards like Harry Potter or Voldemort. Yeah. But it's like in general, wizards need to learn yep. spells, then they become better and better. Yeah. And then they become a powerful wizard. So and it's like with color yeah. capture, it's like she captures colors. Why does she do it? Because it's her job. Why is that her job? Because the color corporation wants more colors so they can sell to customers. I see. Um right. and then it you just it's like making sure you I think you have a why when you're setting up a fantastical world, making mm -hmm. sure you have a why for every action and that helps base it right and you need like an arc for it it's yeah. like you know the plot you know the character where the character's from the background i mean it makes sense and just like rational storytelling but like i'm just thinking of the keeper of secrets now like there's totally a million questions to be asked that i'm sure you could answer mm -hmm. within the story um but yeah i love that yeah <laughs> and like even harry potter is like yeah. a very loose magic system you know yeah. like same with uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, it's kind of just like here Gandalf does yeah, yeah. the thing. Yeah, Lord of the Rings especially is like, well, I mean, that's there's so, there's like a history book to the Lord of the Rings, but yeah, yeah, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Where you're like, how did Gandalf suddenly come back to yeah. life? And I don't. And it's understand done well, of course, but I, that's why I love Sanderson and reading Mistborn for the first time, like the hardcore um, metallurgy system, mm -hmm. and it's like almost. I feel like I remember being very tiresome reading it, being like, she drained the thing and yeah. she did the thing and now she feels this and now she pushes and pulls and it's like very, um, I don't know, very like uh, just like in your face, but it, it works and like it is so, you you can kind of expect it to happen because it's such like a hardcore system. Yeah, there is right a level wrong. of like it can be too much detail yeah. um, where it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to read a textbook about <laughs> magic. Yeah. Like I do want to see some right. like cool magic be done. Of course. But. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, the sounds of the city. The sounds of the city. <laughs> Dude, how was a little pregame here the other night? It was good. It was chill. Just yeah. a couple friends. I mean, it's always like... I was just like, whoa. And there ran a bunch of random people. <laughs> it is? It's classic, dude. Um, I was telling a couple people about your studio. Just being like, yeah, I met this guy's clue. Really yeah. cool. He just got a studio. And just saying how you're starting to, or thinking about doing like life drawing classes or, yeah, or just life drawing nights or whatever totally. here. And yeah, people are into it. So. I know. And I like, I'm yeah, so cool. into it, you know, like, yeah. I cannot <laughs> freaking wait, but it's like a little logistic thing. And I want to like lay it up. So it's like really nice for people. Like I want to, mm. like, I don't want people to pay. It's like private. Mm. You get invited. Like, I'm gonna have easel set up for everyone materials like obviously people can bring their own shit and do whatever but like I want to I don't want to be a teacher or an institution but I want to be like ready yeah. for people so they could just enjoy it to the fullest um yeah I so know a lot of people do like maybe used to go to art school or whatever and they just yeah. miss drawing but they kind of know what to do but they just want to have space to exactly do it, yeah so. the people who like leave classes it's like filtering people like that This guy Sonos just plays when he's not there. What? Yeah, he's not. Yeah, I don't think so. He said that he wakes up to NPR on his Sonos at home, and that it, like his Sonos is connected to his studio, and it's just like, nice, dude. We're doing a potter. I'm hitting the pot, bro. <laughs> but it's not really that big of a deal. Like if it's in, I'm just I text him if he turns it off. It turns it off, but we'll just keep ripping. That's um, cool. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I'm just like such a control freak and like very meticulous. So like to do something like that, like I have to do all these things to make it like mm. the most epic. It's kind of like yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. downfalls, honestly, mm. or not one of my best traits. I think it's like a trait that like <laughs> I do things big and I like to, you know, really like lean into it. Like this podcast, like we're yeah. still so small and like we don't get many views, but like I went so <laughs> ham building it, like me and Chris, you know, like the whole thing, the workflow. But I just like can't not do it. It's so ham building this. This is you like this it's table? Not, I built this, connected did this. Did you build the table? Yeah. It looks good. Look dude. at this connection. Cool. You can't even see this scene, baby. Wow, that's a nice... How'd you... Glue? What, are there I'm saying. There? You... I'm saying. <laughs> but um, anyway, so like, yeah, like the whole figure drawing thing, like it's, it, I could easily just do it now. I know models. I could be like, mm -hmm. hey, come over, invite a couple friends, be like, let's draw. But my crazy brain, it's like, let's set it up. Let's have it scheduled. Let's make sure everyone's like... <laughs> got their setup so it's just like one of my you know neuroses that i have to go through but okay i think it will we be can good. Just, we can just it can just be done yeah like we can just do it there's no there's no pressure i know well maybe i need people like you to be like here's, dude here's, chill out just fucking yeah. like go because your selling point right now is like because i know you want to be a good you want to have people come in and like have a good time but a big selling point here is just this space so people can walk in and they're already like this guy I'm I'm sold. They could yeah. just walk in and walk out and not draw anything, and they'd right. be like, "Oh, I had a fun time." Yeah, I'm sure. And <laughs> so I don't I think need, just like, having the the night, the space to host itself is a yeah, good. Yeah, no, that's what thing. I need to do, and I, it will only get better. And like, I'm a very iterative type of person. Like, you have to build something to then to then make it mm -hmm. better. But yeah, it's just my own craziness. But um, yeah, I don't need affirmation from people about how awesome or anything is. I just want it to be like legit and good, and yeah. like especially when people get naked, you know, like. Yeah. phones and stuff like it's like a very traditional kind of world so it's like make sure the checks are marked but anyways yeah, yeah like and just, i'm also you just start small too just have like the homies over yeah, and then 100 and i'm and really excited but also like i was so busy doing everything else this is like a big thing that I was kind of saving for like the fall yeah especially because it was so hot but when i get back from florida i'm like that's like my next thing to kind of cycle in super Safe, amped. Dude. you're cool. all invited not <laughs> um, but, uh, Sorry, guys. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we, we'll, oh, we'll figure gosh. it out. What was I just gonna say though? Um, shite. Oh uh, yeah. Also, I'm questions. No, I was, trying, no, I was trying to. I'm trying okay. to throw events. Also, and guess who I hit up to help me throw it? Who? Fruits. There you go. <laughs> yeah. The man, dude. And uh, he's super. Hopefully, he's amped about it. But I think there could be other cool things. You know, like not even like parties. Like you, you guys, and mm -hmm. you, and also. This will be in, but like Jordan's has an awesome studio, like really mm -hmm. awesome. Like everyone, you know, relates him to Casey Neistat. I don't know if you even like that or want to be pigeonholed in that. It's there's, obviously there's a some compliment. inspiration there for sure. And it's I obviously mean, it's, a compliment, but yeah, you're your own person. But like, you throw super awesome parties, 
at your studio where you also live and that's really fun i'm mm -hmm. definitely trying to do that here <laughs> but like events yeah like halloween i was talking to chris like mm. do a super fun costume party yeah. maybe involve like a brand or do you know i don't know I just like you like, got some good costumes up your sleeve too with all these oh yeah all these props and everything <laughs> i mean I'm, that's like another prop thing like the building of the props yeah. adam savage's one day builds for his prop for his uh comic-con outfits mm -hmm. some great content some crazy stuff yeah. um but anyways uh yeah before the instagram questions i have a nice kind of open-ended question do you mm -hmm. remember the first thing you made that you were like, wow, this is awesome. Or like, wow, I could actually do this. Um, in what medium? Anything. Like when you were younger or like your first wow experience. And like, I'm trying to think of myself. If I have one like that, I can kind of think that. But anytime yeah. you were like, wow, I'm so impressed with myself. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's not this like clicking moment where it's like, yeah, I'm at the level of my life. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? No, like, I think it was that first, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but it was when like, I was bored on the couch and my mom was like, just draw the cartoons that you watch. Mm. And then I was like, I can't do that. And she was like, yeah, you can, just cartoons. I was like, whatever. And then I drew one and it looked like what it looked like on the screen. Mm. And I was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> I just made my own cartoon. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. And of course, that, that's not like anything awesome from memory or whatever. I was like watching the screen mm -hmm. while I'm drawing. But um, that was the first time I was like, oh, I kind of made something that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And now I made it my own. Right. And then it's like, oh, well, if I change the, the hair on this, then this is now my own little character. Mm -hmm. Or if I change the, what if I made them taller or, you know, put them in a different environment or something. And then it's from there I could, I was like, whoa, I can, I can draw whatever I want. Yeah. And I mm. think like an important thing to piggyback on that is like yeah maybe your mom forced you but like you did it by you for you and like mm -hmm. then seeing that outcome it's almost like a extremely authentic um you know situation where like you really remember it and then it like yeah gives you like a extremely positive experience moving forward to continue yeah i mean she just helped encourage me like that first time mm -hmm. and then it's like you know a couple it's like a couple months later and she's like, why is, why is there paper all over the house? And I'm like, I'm drawing everything. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like, everything's a cartoon. Right. And then she's like, okay, calm down. Yeah. Don't, like clean up your mess. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's I think kind of where it started. And then I think video was also like, I got a drone for Christmas one year. And mm. then a, like, a, like a really basic one that looked like a potato. But I shot like a little, I shot video with it. And then I looked at it on the screen. And I was like, whoa, this looks like. A helicopter shot that i see in movies and it's mm. like whoa i can kind of make movies like this is this is interesting do you ever think about or do you do this consult for other creators and like be not like the face of content but help direct other mm. things do you do any of that are you i interested? haven't i haven't yet i'd be interested in it just because i don't know how that would look yet mm. but it could be interesting yeah. um I'm so thinking to like know. help storyboard things for people or like yeah I've helped friends like write some ideas of help yeah. Fritz with ideas or just help shape things but um yeah I don't I don't know I've never worked on it like fully mm -hmm. to build out a story with somebody yeah so I don't know no just a question because I feel yeah. like you know a lot of people have good ideas but I think a lot of people they struggle to like execute them or mm -hmm. visualize them mm -hmm. which helps you then execute you know it's kind of like yeah. a the bridge between ideas like you know everyone has ideas you know maybe subjectively they're good or bad but i think what removes a lot of people is just like doing mm. and like i said before like this can do attitude like mm -hmm. doing it you know like i'm gonna build yeah. my desk at home to then <laughs> yeah. build other things you know it's kind of like this thing that not a lot of people have not to mm -hmm. say you're you know a no, savant a or that yeah. i'm like some like the most doer ever but like i think there's these things you can like take out attributes of people where it's like okay this person's like kind of a doer yeah i think that's i think with consulting and stuff it'd probably be mostly with brands versus other just other creators mm -hmm. because brands have money so they can pay for something to get done versus mm -hmm. if i'm just like if i'm pitching the color capture idea to you you're like oh this is fun but like you know maybe like maybe you won't build out the whole set or like you're like oh i don't really know how to build a backpack so i'll just get like a jan sport like cloth backpack and we'll just do it like that yeah and it's like that doesn't quite have the same feel to it it's no. some of these details that make it work yeah. but a brand with money will be like oh we'll just pay for the backpack mm -hmm. we'll pay for whatever to get built so i don't know yeah it, it opens interesting 
yeah kind of avenues nice yeah. all right i have i have one actually really good instagram question that i think is a little different than can i ask one before Absolutely, please yeah. do you keep all your old props or like the smaller ones you have a little museum of all the old stuff yeah the smaller ones i do yeah and other ones i think i'll use again so i still have the back the color capture backpack because that's coming that's coming back <laughs> hell uh, yeah dude but yeah all the smaller stuff i do and some of the, even the bigger stuff i've kind of unbuilt it and then folded it down try to make it smaller <laughs> some of the stuff i've had to get rid of but uh yeah for the most part i keep it oh yeah i remember when we were at your house or you you had the the keeper secrets chest there's like an original one that was mm -hmm. bigger that you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i still got that one still got the jacket i think the name tag too yeah those are great yeah. um yeah i love props um i actually buy a lot of stuff off etsy for like compositional paintings oh interesting and i like that a lot more because it's like rather than just going on amazon i mean it's the same thing you're buying something but the people on etsy are like profiled artists and like mm. that's their thing and like they have a bunch of awesome process videos like yeah. i've gotten a couple really awesome masks i don't know if i showed you but i gotta look at that more i love it i'll go to like flea markets and yeah. stuff around the city because it's i like the older stuff that mm -hmm. kind of already has some character to it yeah but Etsy would be easier to like browse through everything. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you build most of your own stuff, but like, I'm not here to like, I have this Medusa mask and like mm -hmm. this Minotaur thing. Like I'm not, I don't have enough That's time true. to build Those it. Are, yeah. But I love it because they're like super it. awesome, like makers mm. and then like you're supporting them. But um, yeah, it's great. Where is this sucker? All right. So this is slam art. How do you market yourself without engaging in narcissistic thought loops? I think that's very relevant, actually. You know, especially being yeah. like a studly man. Well, thank you for the compliment. Appreciate that. Jawline, uh, mind, <laughs> the minds of Moria. <laughs> but, you know, that's like uh, a relevant question. Yeah. Especially the viral videos we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I think a lot of times, like, I, I just know that a lot of this social media stuff is very fleeting so it's like uh my videos might be viral now but who knows if there's an algorithm switch and then i've got to switch with it and maybe like it could be a tough couple months or whatever um i think also like i my videos aren't really about me they're about my friends mm. um so people a lot of my audience doesn't know much about me um which is fine. That's a great I think, point. I think I'm going to, I think I'll like kind of start doing a little more videos about me doing stuff like along with my friends. But um, yeah, that, I think that helps it where it's like, I'm kind of shifting <laughs> the attention to somebody else because I think they're really cool. Um, totally. So I want people to know how cool these other people are. Yeah. And, and that's what I love about the content. It, it really is like you're curating a playlist. Mm -hmm. You're making the, obviously the content, but you're, just lighthousing other awesome people in a yeah. creative narrative fashion mm -hmm. which is wonderful which yeah. actually leads me to another great question of to, to just finish up this please. question because i realized there was like a marketing bad. part of that intro one no no, no i was just thinking as yeah. you're talking but i think like marketing myself it's just kind of knowing like where my strengths and weaknesses are like mm. i know that i can tell a great story yep but mm. i know that i cannot do a great like tiktok vlog <laughs> like that's just not it's maybe it'll be nice to watch for a little bit but it's gonna feel like disconnected and just not right yeah. um so like i i know i can be confident in my storytelling and my prop building but i know that there are other areas that i'm just not as good at and yeah. so almost like you're doubling down on your strengths and yeah. not even testing the things that you perhaps are yeah exactly on. i i mean i'm gonna i'll I'll test them a little bit and start testing things, but like mm -hmm. I'm never going to be a fashion TikToker probably. Like that, I'll add fashion to my own little worlds, but you know, I'm not going to be that. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be, um, I don't know, like animal TikTok, where it's like guys just hanging out with animals all day or like doing whatever, or like, uh, I don't know, all these other little niches, like they, they're doing great on their thing and I'm doing great on mm -hmm. my thing. So that's fine with me and that's like the authentic you so you don't get you know you're not like being a narcissist like you're not like reaping the benefits of like just telling your own life and getting millions of views because i feel like yeah. that's very toxic because i deal with that like i'm a not tough, a hardcore vlogger but you know yeah it can be a tough like medium to yeah. to bounce through and then it can also put a lot of pressure on you of like 
people expect you to mm -hmm. show up for them every day and to keep making videos for them and right you're like i'm tired and <laughs> a lot of people don't want to listen so yeah yeah it can be tough um great and then like do you have other series you're thinking of because we were talking about my friends how i think it's really wonderful successful creative fulfillment but do you have other ideas uh, you're talking about experience but we just touch on that yeah briefly, but i I'm think curious. like doing more series about maybe me and how i build things mm, and whatever um i, I think, think that's, that's i'm also trying to think about like how my content lives differently on each platform so i think youtube mm. will be like a little more vlog style a little more like behind the scenes less put together because i can't make these if i do these videos for five minutes it, i've made a short film and that's too yeah, <laughs> that's, that's too much effort yeah sure. um so that might be more vlog style i don't know on my then my friend really is more just like that's the intro statement that makes you remember that oh this is this guy's <laughs> when you're scrolling through your page you're like oh this guy's back again he maybe i like his stories i'll, I'll watch this story mm -hmm. um but it's like within that there's the color capture series there's the secret keeper series there's like other different characters mm -hmm. in this world so it's almost kind of like the the my friend is like the audio logo of the start of the show but the show has so many characters That's deep, man. so hopefully people That's like continue to identify with these different characters yeah um and it's like your own cosmere yeah and that's that's a little part of it um but if people i don't know i think things will slightly shift and maybe it won't be my friend mm. maybe it'll just be like oh i met this guy the other day slew yeah. this is his story right and right. like you go from there yeah um but i really love telling these imaginative stories mm -hmm. and that's what i want to keep doing yeah. so the the context of it might change but mm -hmm. that's going to be the basis for right. the foreseeable future that's great yeah and I, like you said i think and i didn't even think about fleshing those stories out but there's clearly so much room mm -hmm. to really continue and yeah and that's the danger of it too it's like i don't want to go right. down <laughs> i don't want to make 10 videos about one character and yeah. people be like i like that other character so yeah. it's a little bit of this balance of, of which ones to make well, all the people watching your videos can eat your dust you know it's yeah. like your, your videos <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's but true it's i understand um well that was wonderful what a wonderful conversation and we end the podcast with a couple gifts okay so the Yu-Gi-Oh card that I give all the people, this is the mathematician. And I thought it was very wow. representational of you for a few reasons. One, because I think mathematicians are very meticulous. And I think mm. you're a meticulous person. Thank you. As a blanket statement. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and then also it's like, uh, you know, some old wisdom. I feel like you're kind of like, I don't know if you get that a I lot. Mean, I like this guy's beard. Like yeah. he's definitely. But like old soul and like yeah. experience. You're not like the quintessential you know 16 year old tiktoker you're kind of mm -hmm. like an adult who had a normal career at vayner which is an mm -hmm. awesome company um and now you're doing your own thing so take it how you will and then also Dude, i got a hoodie oh my god but one of the slew hoodies but Dude, yeah this just is a sick little gift. yeah no i was eyeing these the other day yeah. this is awesome but um dude just in time for sweater season oh i pray that it's coming yes. soon we were talking we had to take Hopefully a break so. because we were Stetson. Oof but we're cooling down now thank yeah. you man i appreciate it thanks You're for welcome, having me man. on i i mean again we have so much in common and it was just a joy <laughs> <laughs> to talk what a pleasure yeah and i hope you come back and obviously hang out more and again if you ever need some stuff or need a bigger cave Dude, too. <laughs> i'll hit you up <laughs> i'll be hitting you up for sure but uh yeah thanks man cool all right see you guys